So this is going to wrap up the project two of Parfait Table Tent. We're going to add a spot varnish. Uh, so the printer will have a varnish plate that covers our parfait glass and makes it nice and shiny. And the other thing we're going to do is add vector text uh, that was in Photoshop and, and keep the high res vector edge. So I'm going to go to my desktop. This is what my project folder looks like right now. And the file I'm interested in right now is my uh, PSD, my layered Photoshop file. Now I'm going to add, do some more work to it. and I don't want to take a chance that I'm going to mess this up so I can duplicate that command D or go under in the finder command uh, file duplicate and then we'll make another one then I can rename that one spot so that I know this is the one with the spot color on it I'll open that one up and what I have now is I have put everything on different layers or in different folders or groups. The background has all of its stuff. Um, the headline is in its own folder and it has two uh, live type in it with some uh, stroke effect on it. Then we have the, the uh, parfait glass and all the accoutrement that go with it. Then we have on, to on the top layer our body copy with a couple of pieces of vector uh, uh, graphic in there. So I have segregated actually the vector stuff, the headline and the body copy are all vector folders from the raster stuff, the stuff that's going to get um, flattened. So let's deal with the spot varnish first. I only want the spot varnish to be on the cup and not on this piece of uh, graphic here. So if I, to make a selection for the cup itself, I can use the mask that masks the cup out. By holding the command key down, I get that little square and there's a selection on the cup and if I come up here under my body copy I can hold down the command and option key and it will uh, subtract from that selection and now I only have the varnish where I want it so in order to make that into a spot color I need to save that selection I'm gonna call this selection uh, I'm gonna call this spot color spot varnish or gloss varnish all caps just like that now if I go to my channels I can see that I have a new spot varnish I want to turn off my selection right now so I can do that under select deselect or command D because I need this to be reversed right now I have the varnish on everything but the glass so with this selected this layer selected I go under image adjustment and then inverse or command I and now I have the varnish where I want it and to make it into a spot varnish and not just a alpha mask, I double click on this and say spot color. Okay? Pretty simple. Now, let's go back to here and take a look at what's going on. Before I left this type in because it was behind the glass, but when I flattened it and saved it as C or converted it to CMYK, it, it, it took that vector um, type and it made it rasterized. So it has a soft edge instead of a nice hard edge. And the same thing happened with these graphics, although I did reset this type in InDesign. So what I'm going to try to do now is save all of this vector type in Photoshop without having to um, lose or rasterize it or reset it in InDesign. So um, when I convert my image from RGB to CMYK, all these color corrections will not make the conversion. Okay, so what I need to do is raster or flatten everything that's going to um, have trouble with that transition. So I'm leaving all the vector stuff the way it is. I'm going to flatten all the stuff that's not uh, vector. So um, in this case, under layer, I believe uh, Command E. Oh, it's all the way at the bottom. You can't see it. It's command E or at the bottom of layers called uh, merge group. Okay, so I'm going to command E, and then I want to get rid of this, even apply this layer. So I'm going to drag just the, the uh, mask to the trash can and say apply, and now I just have that floating um, glass in there. I don't know if we can see it. Yeah, there it is. 
um, the background layer, Command E, now it's all flat. And the only thing I have now is these two vector layers, which is a good deal. So I'm going to go under Image Mode and now convert this to CMYK. But instead of saying merge this time, I'm going to say don't merge. Otherwise, all my layers will flatten and they'll rasterize. So don't merge. It's telling me that I'm going to get this profile, and that's OK. So now we are in CMYK, as we can see from up here. So now we're going to save it. Uh, let's do a save as. And where we save it needs to be in the high res folder. And we are going to save it as a Photoshop PDF. We could sa save it as a Photoshop element, and it would give us our um, spot varnish, but it wouldn't respect the, the vector, and we would end up with rasterized vector. Uh, but if a PDF will give us everything we need. So you notice that the extension changed to PDF. I'm saving it to my high res folder. Spot colors are selected, and layers are selected. I'm going to say save. Um, and it's going to give me another dialog box, a regular PDF one. I'm going to go up and save it as a PDF X1A, just like that. And I don't need to look at any of this stuff because it's all good. Save PDF. And now, if I look in my folder down here, I have this PDF under my high res. So that's the one I'm going to strip in. So let's go to InDesign now where I have open my InDesign file that already has uh, my PDF, uh, I mean my uh, TIFF uh, saved in here. Now what we'll do is we'll zoom up here so we can see what's going on. Right now I have my, uh, my text and my TIFF grouped together so I can move them around. But I'm going to ungroup them by saying something like Object Ungroup or Shift Command G. And now I have the two pieces again. I'm going to get rid of this because my new text is in there in my PDF. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come up here and do the same thing. Select that. Object ungroup. And then delete the type. Okay. Under my links, I can see that I have this object in here twice. So it's listing it as a little group. Um, that's my TIFF. I can replace both of those at the same time, or almost the same time, by selecting this group and then hitting the relink. And because everything's the same size, I should be able to relink it to my spot color PDF this time. And so open. And see how my type came back in? It's because it's replaced this one and this one with a PDF this time. Now, what's strange is that I don't, I don't see my spot color on here. So let's do something, make sure that my spot color is there. Under Window and Output, I can see Separations Preview. Okay, so I'm going to turn that on and Separations, View Separations on, and I can see that there is, in fact, a gloss varnish layer. I can turn it on and I can turn it off. I can also turn on and off the four color layer. So that's a way to make sure that that came in. Another thing is that it, on my, in my swatches, it added this when I brought that P, uh, the PDF in because it knew it, it came with this baggage and it brought it into my uh, spot colors over here or under my swatches over here. So one last thing I need you to do here. Just make yourself a, um, a text box, long and skinny like this. All right. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Type your name, not my name. Um, this is going to be Project 2, number 2, art 238. And then, lots of spaces here, caps, C, M, Y, K, and gloss, 
gloss varnish. Okay, I want all of this type to be Helvetica. I want, oh, also I want all this type to be 20 point. So 20. Oops, need some more space. There we go. I want this type to be Helvetica bold. And then I want you to put these letters in the right color. Black is already black, so you don't have to worry about black. But yellow needs to be yellow. Magenta needs to be magenta. Not red, magenta only. <clears throat> cyan needs to be cyan, just like that. Okay. Now, if I swish back out here, I can take this, give it a little rotate, put it over here, and remember, I have a dotted line for my fold over here, so I want to be careful not to put it over my, my dotted line. But just somewhere on that side is good. And then I'm going to save my PDF. So Command E or File Export. Oh, don't forget to save, of course. Um, here's my PDF2, and we're going to call this one SPOT, so that we know the difference between that one and my other one. And this goes at the same layer, top layer of the folder. And then I'm going to hit Save. I'm going to get this uh, dialog box again. So I'm going to reset it back to PDFX1A. I'm going to go under Marks. Turn everything on, everything on, and now I need a quarter of an inch, so 0.25 around it. I export it. Now it's opening in um, Acrobat. If you don't have Acrobat, then, um, I mean, if you, do, you do have Acrobat, but if it's not opening in Acrobat, you can drag it on top of the uh, Acrobat Pro icon and it will open just the same way as it opened in Photoshop. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. <clears throat> um, looks like everything's here, including our separations. Under Tools, you'll find Print Production and Output Preview, which gives you this little dialog box, and it shows you the same thing. There's my, uh, my spot varnish plate. There's my four-color plate. If I look closely, I can see... I'm going to close this. Command and spacebar will give me this. If I look closely, I can see that all of my type has held a very uh, nice uh, vector edge instead of a raster edge. Also, my uh, text objects. Now, it looks like, if I look close, it looks like I have, let me move over here, a nice edge. Oh, it's a slow one. It looks like I have a nice edge until I hit this red, which is my um, my gloss varnish. But if I turn that off, you can see that it's nice and smooth still here. So don't worry about that. Everything is vectored that needs to be vector. I have all the colors I need. So this is a good um, PDF to send to the printer, who will then turn that red layer into a, a gloss varnish. All right, so the last thing I want to do is come back to InDesign after I've made a satisfactory PDF and then create a package that has the latest InDesign file and all its links. So under File, I've already saved. Under File, Package. Yes, yes. Now this needs to go on the very uh, top layer with the InDesign file. It's going to create a folder. Um, with the word folder at the end of it. So that's correct. Say package, makes its package. I'm gonna go out here and look. And here it is. And there's my fonts and my links. Okay, and that's it. Thanks for watching.